Good evening, it's 8 o'clock. The top headlines tonight. Well, in a major scaling up of India's vaccination drive, India's elderly will be vaccinated from Monday, the 1st of March onwards. All people who are 60 plus and those who are 45 plus with comorbidities like hypertension, diabetes will be included from this Monday. A major scaling up there of India's vaccination drive. For the first time also, you can pay and get a vaccine at private hospitals. The price will be announced later. And this decision has come just in time because India's COVID cases are up by 30% in the last 24 hours. Delhi announces that a negative test is needed to enter Delhi from five states. Meanwhile, Mumbai crosses 1,000 cases. Maharashtra is also up by over 2,000 cases in 24 hours by over 8,807. The world's largest cricket stadium is in Motera, Gujarat. The new stadium is named Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium. So, political controversy over whether the Sadar Patel Cricket Stadium has been renamed a Narendra Modi Stadium. But the BGP says this stadium is just part of the huge new Sadar Patel Sports Complex. Rahul Gandhi tweets this Modi Stadium has both an Adani and Reliance end. The truth is out. But Home Minister Amit Shah says that this is the pride of India. Uh, Ahmedabad will be India's sporting city and can hold Olympic events even in this complex. Mamta Banerjee loses her cool at a rally today uh, just after her nephew's wife was interrogated by the CBI saying the PM is a monster, he's like Ravan and he's responsible for riots. The BGP official reaction hasn't come yet. Meanwhile, Rahul ends his Kerala political campaign today. He goes out to sea with fishermen. This is part of his three-day election campaign tour. The BJP, however, attacks Rahul Gandhi on what they say is his divide and rule politics. Rising prices hit Ujwala gas cylinder refills. Steep LPG price hikes now means that less and less people are refilling their free gas cylinders. India's second biggest exchange hits a technical glitch. The National Stock Exchange cancels open orders after glitches today. Our lead story tonight, the government has cleared the vaccinations of all India's senior citizens to begin from this Monday, March the 1st. What's crucial in this is that all those who are 60 plus will be vaccinated and the private sector will be involved because now you can actually pay and get a vaccination at a private hospital of your choice as well. Also, the government has cleared that people who are 45 plus with comorbidities can also be included in this next phase. This decision couldn't have come sooner as questions have been raised about India's vaccination drives slowing down with the low turnout of healthcare and frontline workers. Also, this comes at a time when India's COVID cases are rising 30% up in the last 24 hours. Those over 60 and those with diseases like diabetes and hypertension will finally get vaccinated from the 1st of March. Now, this vaccination second phase will start from Monday the next, 1st March 2021. So, 60 plus anybody and 45 plus with comorbidities will be given vaccines ek baat main bahut vinamrata se kehna chahunga hum log adhikansh mantriyon ki apni apeksha hai ki hum log payment karke lenge ye hum aapko batana chahte hain the public welcomed the government's move 67 year old rakesh dang and his 65 year old wife had been waiting to get vaccinated both are patients of hypertension and have spent most of the last year inside their house the vaccination to be available at a proper health care center, a proper hospital where the uh, COVID uh, requirements are met, distances are maintained. I, I would never go to a place which is crowded. But are India's systems ready? Officials say that modalities of the public launch of the COVID mobile application and website are being finalized. The government is already uploading bulk data from electoral rolls and there will be different options for self-registration and the means to upload photo identity documents like the Aadhaar card, driving license, PAN card and so on. It's not only the COVID app, we, will, we are thinking of linking it with 
Arogya Setu app, the government is already in that process of thinking and also there would be some people who are not app savvy also. So there you know our healthcare machinery comes into picture which will be helping them. The move towards wider vaccination comes at a time when India has been seeing a surge in daily cases. The centre has also rushed central teams to 10 states which are seeing a surge in daily cases and has written to 7 states, Maharashtra, Kerala, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Punjab and the Union Territory of Jammu and Kashmir to increase the proportion of RT-PCR tests. Also, those coming from Maharashtra, Kerala, Madhya Pradesh, Punjab and Chhattisgarh to Delhi will need a negative RT-PCR report to enter the city. There is a rapid increase in cases in central Maharashtra, eastern and central Maharashtra. This is somewhat worrying because it may be that a new wave of pandemic is starting. The government had earlier said that there are 27 crore people in the above 50 and below 50 age group with comorbidities and the government aims to vaccinate them by July 2021. In New Delhi, this is Sukirti Dwedi for NGTV. So hospitals are still to get formal details of how this process will roll out. But remember, it starts from Monday. So Sonal has been on the phone speaking to people, trying to piece together what this actually means, how it will be done. So here are some questions answered. Sonal, over to you. Well, thanks, Sonia, for that. The biggest piece of news in all households across the country today is that finally it is our turn. Starting 1st of uh, March, people above 60 and those with comorbidities above 45 are eligible for vaccine. Also, in the second phase of rollout will happen in private hospitals. That means that you can actually pay for your vaccine and get it for yourself. But just four days to go. That's pretty much what we know about the rollout process so far. And to be fair, there are more questions than answers at this point. But we've broken down for you three key questions that we need immediate answers to. First up, how to register and will it happen via the COVID app? How much will the vaccine cost? And who defines comorbidities? How will it be established? On to registration now. The indication so far is that COVID app might not be the only source of enrollment. Following several glitches in the app that led to delay in vaccination during the frontline and healthcare workers, government is likely to introduce government centers where you can get yourself registered in person. And since elderly might not have access or face difficulties operating apps, they are encouraging this as a way to go forward. Last we checked, actually, COVID app was not open to registration even now. What about comorbidities? Well, the Niti Aayog, Dr. V.K. Paul says that a committee comprising of 12 experts from various specialties, including cancer, kidney, lungs, heart, all of them are working on a formula of sorts that will tell us how and who gets eligible. But we don't know how soon. That also we will have to wait for. What we do know is that those with 45 years of age and serious comorbidities will need to produce a medical certificate from a general physician verifying severity of the pre-existing conditions. For example, if a person has diabetes, which is under control, blood pressure, which is under control, he won't make the cut. The seriousness and not the duration of the disease is going to be the key. So while we wait for the health ministry to give a list, we've actually brought out to you what exactly are the international standards on this one. The risk group here as identified by US and UK. So there they identify chronic respiratory diseases, heart diseases, the entire list on your screen right now of how exactly it goes. In, important here to see is that obesity also has been seen as a major role. And then the all important question of cost. Now, Prime Minister Modi had said and announced that the centre will bear the cost of vaccination, 30 million people at least to start with. But now some governments are saying that they want to give vaccination for free. West Bengal, for example. But currently, if you see, the vaccines cost between 200 to 295 to the government. So roughly, that's the range that we're looking at. The one indication that came from AIMS director today was that charges will be just to cover the overhead costs, that is syringes, human resources. And like we've seen a cap on pricing on testing, there could be a cap here as well. That's what we know so far. We still are waiting to hear more from the health ministry. Thanks, Sonal. At 9 o'clock also, we've got a panel of top doctors and hospital representatives to answer all those key questions. Now, here's why it's so important that the scaling up came and we really need to accelerate our vaccination pace. Look at these numbers. So, the daily COVID cases average over a weekly average is 13,266. The total new cases reported in the last 24 hours was 13,742. So, we're going up a 30% increases 
in cases on the previous day. Let's look at what all experts look at, which is the reproduction rate or the R rate of the virus. Now, it's crossed the threshold of one for the first time in India in almost three months. Above one indicates that the virus is spreading. Below one indicates the infection is contracting. Let's just look at the main states with the top new case in the last 24 hours. Now, Maharashtra was 6,000. 218 followed by Kerala at over 4,000 then Tamil Nadu much much less so there we see that Maharashtra and Kerala are mainly the main uh, states driving up the surge but these cases on the rise in Punjab as well Karnataka look at the percentages so Kerala is the highest percentage increase then Maharashtra Punjab Gujarat and Madhya Pradesh so that's why we have to watch out for those let's however look at the next big headline and this is about what's in a name well quite a lot the new cricket stadium in Mutera, Gujarat. Now, this is the largest in the world. The president and Home Minister Amit Shah were there for the inauguration. Has now been called the Narendra Modi Cricket Stadium. But there is a political controversy because A, the Congress claims that it was that it was a Sadar Patel Stadium and how can it be renamed after the current Prime Minister? It's an insult to his legacy. The BJP hits back saying that actually now it's the Sadar Patel Sporting Complex which can even host Olympic events. It's only one part, the Cricket Stadium, which has been named after the Prime Minister Narendra Modi. But interestingly, of course, within the stadium, there's also two ends, the Reliance end and the Adani end. Now, that's, of course, a par for the course. Corporates can buy ends and it happens all over in India. But the Congress, Rahul Gandhi, tweeting that this shows Hamdo Hamare Do because in the Narendra Modi Stadium, you have the Adani end and the Reliance end. As top VIPs, including the President of India, gathered in Ahmedabad for the opening of the world's largest stadium, a sudden twist in the tale. At the touch of a button by the President, the curtains parted to reveal the Prime Minister's name. The Sardar Patel Stadium in Motera, now called the Narendra Modi Stadium. In attendance was the Home Minister who said the state-of-the-art stadium was Mr. Modi's dream. प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी गुजरात के मुख्यमंत्री थे तब देखा हुआ उनका सपना था जो न केवल दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा क्रिकेट स्टेडियम है दुनिया का सबसे बड़ा स्पोर्ट्स स्टेडियम है जिसका नाम आज हमने हमारे देश के प्रधानमंत्री नरेंद्र मोदी जी के नाम से रखा है मेनी आस्किंग हवेवर इफ इवन द गवर्नमेंट मीडिया न्यू अबाउट द चेंज बिफोर हैंड a tweet from Prasar Bharti about five hours before the event said the president would be inaugurating the Sardar Patel Stadium. Four hours later, Prasar Bharti called it the Modi Stadium. The presence of both the president of India and the home minister at the unveiling of the world's largest cricket stadium was a big news moment for the media. But its renaming from Sardar Patel Stadium Motera to the Narendra Modi Stadium came as a complete googly for everybody. The government went on the defensive, claiming only the stadium has been renamed, not the sports complex. Motera Stadium का नाम बदला है, वो परिसर वल्लभ भाई पटेल सरदार पटेल ही है. Other controversies surfaced. The Congress questioned why the two ends of the stadium were named after corporates seen as close to the government. Regardless, the optics were clear. With the Gujarat-led BJP in power in Delhi. The center of cricket's gravity shifting to the Prime Minister and Amit Shah's home state. Moving to politics and Mamta Banerjee lost her cool today at a public rally in Hooghly a day after her nephew's wife was questioned by the CBI. She attacked the Prime Minister, describing him as Ravan and saying that he causes riots. The BGP has tweeted saying that she's clearly lost her cool. <laughs> प्रेसिडेंट
Well, moving now to other politics, Rahul Gandhi ended his three-day campaign uh, poll tour in Kerala today. He was out at sea with fishermen. He also visited yesterday those who have been sitting on strike, uh, public service commission exam, uh, who, people who are asking for jobs. But the BGP has hit out at him for a controversy over what he said on politics in Kerala and the issues being discussed, the voter there being more intelligent. Rahul Ji. In Relevant Beril, Abimana Toda Gude, Itanga Seri, Katapur, the Gihad, my Swagam Chegia. Rahul Gandhi sets the political tone for Congress campaign in Kerala ahead of the Assembly elections. In Kollam, sailing, interacting with fishermen, a key vote bank in the state. The petrol and diesel price is rising. This money is being taken out of your pockets and given to two or three businessmen in India. And I would certainly look into what the Kerala government is doing with regards to these trawlers that they're building. I'm for competition, but not unfair competition. First, he, he understands the issue, then respond. Otherwise, he responds to response. During his three days in Kerala, Rahul Gandhi has not only attacked the BJP at the center, but strongly, in an unprecedented manner, hit out at the CPM-led left government in the state, even as CPM is a current Congress ally in West Bengal. Congress has to take the help of the left. Now Rahul Gandhi has to explain. If CPM is so bad, we don't want him to be mature as he has been behaving, even in Bihar, in Puducherry. The issues in Kerala are different from the issues in West Bengal. The, the, the CPM has shown us in five years in power how unjust they can be and we have to stand up for justice and for the people of Kerala. Rahul Gandhi's intended praise for the Malayali voters' interest in issue-based politics during the Tuesday UDF rally did not gone well with BJP. For the first 15 years, I was a member of parliament in the north. So I had got used to a different type of politics. If I might say so, the intelligence with which you do your politics. BJP accusing Rahul Gandhi of divide and rule. It's a battle for political existence in Kerala, for Congress that has seen collapses in other states, to be able to come to power in Kerala, a state which alternates between a Congress-led government as well as a CPM-left government. For the CPM, which has its last bastion standing here, and for a BJP, which has only one MLA in Kerala. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. Moving now to our special report, it's not just rising petrol and diesel prices, but also rising prices of LPG, which is hitting consumers across India. Recently, the finance minister announced that the free gas cylinder scheme, Ujwala, would be extended to one crore more people. But for current beneficiaries, the big problem is that they can't afford to refill their current free cylinders because they can't afford the high prices of LPG. Suman, who cooks two daily meals for a family of four with farm earnings of about 6,000 rupees a month, got a Ujwala gas connection two years ago, but hasn't managed a refill in eight months now. This cooking gas agency in rural Lucknow services 40 villages. And the sharp rise in LPG prices, almost 170 rupees since November, is keeping the poorest customers away, its owner says. About half of the agency's 6,500 customers are under the central government's Ujwala Yojana, where subsidies per cylinder are paid directly into the beneficiary bank account. <laughs> The sales at this agency have fallen from a high of 4,000 metric tons last April when the government gave out free cylinders as part of its COVID response to 3,200 metric tons in July and now to just about 2,700 in January 2021. This is what it means for the poorest consumers. In November, a beneficiary paid 632 rupees per cylinder and got back some amount in subsidy. As on today, a beneficiary has to pay 807 rupees, getting back just about 35 rupees as subsidy.
An abundance of data and evidence on the ground all suggests that gas cylinders have reached most of our country, especially the rural areas. But the challenge before the government is to ensure sustainable, cost-effective refills so that people can take advantage of schemes like the Ujjwala Yojana. In the rural areas of Lucknow, with camera person Rajesh Gupta, this is Alok Pandey, NDTV. Moving now for a quick look at other news, India's second biggest stock exchange, the National Stock Exchange, reopened today following a technical glitch which led to a halt in all trading across equity, equity futures and option segments. They extended their time, remaining open till 5 o'clock along with the BSC. The National Stock Exchange benchmark rose 0.6% and the Sensex climbed 300 points to close above 50,000.